Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. Extra, extra, read all about it. Singer Elton John is leaving Twitter. John, whose real name is Reginald Dwight, is of course a prolific singer and songwriter, whose hits include Crocodile Rock, Candle in the Wind, Your Song, and Benny and the Jets. I remember seeing Elton live, and he is a tremendous artist. So why leave Twitter, and why is that news? Well, in the grand scheme of things, his departure means nothing. But it's his reasoning I want to get into, and why that matters as Elon Musk continues releasing internal communication at the company prior to his takeover. John tweeted in what may be his last tweet. All my life, I've tried to use music to bring people together, yet it saddens me to see how misinformation is now being used to divide our world. I've decided to no longer use Twitter, given their recent change in policy, which will allow misinformation to flourish unchecked. Elon Musk, the new self-proclaimed chief twit, replied to John tweeting, I love your music. Hope you come back. Is there any misinformation in particular that you're concerned about? So Elton did not reply, presumably because he can't point to anything. This was all show. This all comes as Musk announced that Twitter would no longer remove controversial challenges to the uniform COVID narrative that got blown up as time went on. This means Twitter doesn't take action against accounts that present scientific challenges to the mainstream narrative about COVID, its origins, its treatments, and its governmental management. Now, critics will say that this spreads misinformation, as Elton stated. But in order to do that, you have to define what misinformation actually is. And that word has been used as an absolute and also as a weapon. If you challenge Anthony Fauci about anything, that is considered misinformation. So it is a bludgeoning tool. And any user who questions or challenges, which is actually the whole fundamental procedure of science, would be removed or muted under previous Twitter safety policy. But when people started getting myocarditis, and studies reveal that more vaccinated people have now died from the virus than unvaccinated, the science is far from absolute. So when Elton claims that misinformation is unchecked, well, who's doing the checking? And far more importantly, who is deciding what is misinformation? It's those who influence the influencers that we have to be wary of. In the Twitter files part one, we learned that information got suppressed, not because they had reason to doubt that the Hunter Biden laptop was hacked or not a real story, but because it was based on a biased perception that could be masked in nebulous policy. When anyone in the company questioned that explanation, it immediately got quashed. So you see, misinformation was actually created within Twitter's walls. Was that checked, Sir Elton? No, it was not. We are just finding out about it now. When you review the mental and economic anguish caused by the pandemic, the lies that we were fed, the intentional distraction from the Wuhan lab theory, and whether the mRNA vaccines were rushed or problematic, there was no check on that information. The only thing that got checked were challenges to that information. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida has created a public health integrity committee and a petition for a grand jury to investigate potential wrongdoing and crime regarding health policy, government propaganda, vaccines, and sudden deaths. Now that is transparency. But such a move would be previously considered harmful misinformation by Twitter's Vijaya Gaddy and Yoel Roth, whom I will get to in a bit. Real piece of work that guy is. So while Sir Elton thinks Musk's Twitter permits any legitimate challenge to health narratives, he fails to understand the way minds were being warped by the internal leaders at Twitter. And here's another hypocrisy. He says that he's always tried to use music to bring people together. Leaving Twitter for the reason he provided is not a unifying move. It's a divisive one because he takes aim at Musk, who is unleashing free speech, a unifying staple of free societies. I believe that it's not Elton himself thinking critically about this issue, but rather liberal groupthink mentality. Elton should be far more worried about Ayatollah Khamenei 
and what happened at the Wuhan lab. China loves our misinformation policies. It keeps people living in oblivion. That is the hypocrisy of this move by Elton John and other celebrities that have melodramatically announced their departures from Twitter, such as Jim Carrey, Whoopi Goldberg, Gigi Hadid, White Stripes musician Jack White, and Trent Reznor. Gosh, I just don't know how my life can possibly go on without the bespoke musings of Gigi Hadid. In fact, Hadid called Twitter a cesspool of hatred and bigotry. Kerry said that he was leaving in a tweet on November 29th, but his account is still active. I feel like this is kind of reminiscent of the lefties that all said that they would move en masse to Canada if Trump was elected, and none of them moved there, not even the ones born in Canada. Jack White left Twitter for a slightly different reason, which was the reinstatement of Donald Trump's account which Trump doesn't even use currently. So White stated on Instagram, quote, so you gave Trump his Twitter platform back. Absolutely disgusting, Elon. That is officially an a-hole move. Why don't you be truthful? Tell it like it is. People like you and Joe Rogan, who gives platforms to liars like Alex Jones, etc., you come into a ton of money, see the tax bill, despise paying your fair share, and then think that moving to Texas and supporting whatever Republican you can is going to help you keep more of your money. How else could Trump possibly interest you?" Unquote. So Jack White thinks the only reason Musk reinstated Trump is to benefit from his tax policies, hmm. even though Trump is no longer president. That's odd. He also said that Musk was using his power to, quote, promote horrible, violence-inducing liars who are taking the country and the world backwards, unquote. We'll see if Jack just stuck around to see what Musk has released through a series of journalists lately, he would actually see who has been lying. Even former Twitter head Jack Dorsey is now taking responsibility for the Trump ban, which he says was wrong for society. Too late now, of course, but at least he admitted it. When Joe Biden and Janet Yellen said inflation would be minimal, they lied. When Biden said the high gas prices were due to the Russia-Ukraine war, he lied. So tell me exactly how reinstating a Twitter account of a former president that doesn't even tweet anymore amplifies violence promoting liars. Trent Reznor told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, we don't need the arrogance of the billionaire class to feel like they can just come in and solve everything. Even without him involved, I just find that it has become such a toxic environment. For my mental health, I need to tune out. I don't feel good being there anymore." Unquote. But Trent, you say it's arrogance, but why can't Musk's motive to actually be to save free speech, unlike the other platforms? How many billionaires do you know who are actually accessible and responsive about their product? Musk revolutionized electric cars, and my God, he's revolutionizing space travel. Is that arrogance, or is that the genius of innovative progress? This man has a brilliant mind. I don't know how much engagement Jack White and Trent Reznor had on Twitter, but they both failed to realize what a cesspool Twitter was before Elon. That's the biggest hypocrisy of this entire thing. They freak out that Trump's account came back, but wait. Trump isn't tweeting. It's like they've been told about a boogeyman that doesn't even exist. That is what leftist groupthink does. It creates a common enemy based on programmed uniform thought. COVID narrative challengers would be one of those enemies. Trump and anyone who follows him would be another enemy. What I saw on Twitter, back when I actually used it, was nothing more than a liberal's playground. I saw mostly negativity or stupidity. Unlike the more photocentric apps like Instagram, you have to say something on Twitter. And the mind is a vast chasm of consciousness. Some of those demons don't need to be let out. Singer Tony Braxton was one of the first celebs to leave Twitter, stating that she was shocked and appalled at the content that she'd seen on the platform since the acquisition, saying, quote, hate speech under the veil of free speech is unacceptable and that Twitter isn't a safe place for people of color. From what I recall, there is black Twitter on Twitter, which focuses on issues that directly affect black people. In that respect, it is exclusionist, but okay, 
That was the point, I suppose. That's what free speech allows you to do. That's what Twitter is for, exchange of ideas. But no, not all of them are going to be courteous or aligned with how you think. What we know now is that in the past, Twitter was curating a utopian world, not based on respect and playing fair, but one that amplified some voices and disparaged or outright banned others they didn't like. But let's halt this whole discussion for a moment. Elon Musk is uncovering the fact that prior heads of safety at Twitter, yes, the heads of safety, like Yoel Roth, were doing the opposite of what is safe. On a recent Twitter Spaces chat, Musk revealed that child pornography had been a real problem on Twitter, and he's making it a top priority to change that. Musk pointed out former safety and trust head Yoel Roth's PhD thesis, in which he said that because underage kids were already accessing content that they shouldn't, maybe content providers should just go ahead and present toned down content. Musk also pointed out a tweet in which Roth asked the following, can high school students ever meaningfully consent to sex with their teachers and linked to an article? Musk wrote, this explains a lot. Now this of course drew reaction from Musk's followers, but it should draw shock and consternation from all of us. Why was Twitter's head of safety and trust posing this question about sex between teachers and students, regardless of age? Is that what you want from the person in charge of protecting children on the platform? Now, if you're Joseph Mann of the Washington Post, you link Musk to QAnon in their pursuit of outing child predator rings and the Pizzagate conspiracy which there are more questions than answers, frankly. Because Yoel Roth is openly gay, the Wash Po, Yahoo Business, and Business Insider all think that this is targeting Roth for his orientation rather than focusing on what Roth said and wrote. They don't care about his actions. They only care about Musk pointing it out. Twitter, unlike the other social media apps, permits adult content. But you can imagine the slippery slope that leads to when it comes to kids. Musk seemed to agree with Eliza Blue, a victim of sex trafficking, that I interviewed at Freedom Fest. That because Twitter was so concerned with suppressing and censoring conservatives, it forgot how to protect the most vulnerable members of society, kids. The Post's men goes on to state, quote, in response Sunday to questions, she said she'd received about her own claim of having been trafficked, which she has not detailed. Blue tweeted that she had reluctantly come forward as a public advocate in 2020 by speaking to conservative Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire, unquote. This is false. She did detail it, even in my interview with her. Watch. So at the time when I was trafficked, um, I met an individual who, who was a photographer at a, a concert in Chicago. And I was 15 years old. I had my driver's permit, so I went. And um, I like to state my age because in, by today's standard, the grooming process happens much more quickly. Uh, in my case, because we were dealing with like landlines and without social media and without the internet, really, uh, it was more phone calls and actually letter, like letters. Uh, letters, so yeah. is what is what he did to groom me. So the Washington Post, one of the country's premier newspapers, is not only taking up for Yoel Roth, but attacking Musk and the very woman who was groomed and trafficked. That's your media, folks. In 2020, Nitikorn Manop was arrested in Thailand for sex trafficking and distribution of child porn. What stood out to police was that this person operated on Twitter for four years and had 290,000 followers, often using the platform to lure minors. Where were the reports on this account? The algorithms, the detectors? No, 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 no. They were too busy censoring the Hunter Biden story and fact-checking COVID questioners. They are really good at that. Eliza Blue wrote about this story on The Blaze. Well, what did the Wash Po call The Blaze? A conspiracy outlet. But it's only a conspiracy until it's true, right? Blue tweeted, Reminder, a 13-year-old minor survivor begged Twitter to remove a video sexually exploiting him. Twitter reviewed the content and said no. They had his government ID showing that he was a minor at the time. The video had over 160,000 views, over 2,000 retweets. 
What Eliza wrote about is verified child porn that occurred and flourished on Twitter, but Yoel Roth was asleep at the wheel and pondering questions about teachers and students having sex and what might be meaningful consent. But all the media cares about is how Musk exposed Roth for his dereliction of duty. They simply don't care what he did, nor his inability to stop child trafficking. And by the way, that child will never get that image back. It's forever damage. This is what is wrong with our society and our media. The Post and Yahoo should be investigating every single instance where child exploitation happened on Twitter. And applaud Musk for tightening up security. But no, they are more worried now for Yoel Roth, whose PhD thesis suggested offering toned down content to teens because, well, we might as well. In 2021, Twitter made 86,666, interesting that it's 666, reports of child sexual abuse material to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. What should the media be more concerned about, QAnon or 86,000 reports? I couldn't find one positive article from the media about Musk's focus on making Twitter safer for kids other than a Newsweek article that was written by Eliza Blue. That's sick. It shows you where the media's heads are at. They don't care about protecting children. So if you're Elton John, Shonda Rhimes, Jack White, Trent Reznor, or esteemed scholar Gigi Hadid, why are none of you worried about how Twitter was before you left? You think Musk is stoking hatred and division? You think it's unsafe? Tell that to the miners that got exploited by users that you didn't care about or think about because you were worried about your blue check mark. And on that note, literally and figuratively, let's say farewell to Elton and his fellow whiny Twitter snowflakes who haven't the faintest clue about what safety and trust are all about. Goodbye, Elton John, though I never knew you at all. When Musk released the files, you didn't seem to appall. Lips crawled out of the woodwork, and they whispered into your brain. They made you leave Twitter, saying it's misinformation. And it seems to me you wrote your tweets like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to parrot when the rain set in And I sure do like your tunes, but don't forget the kids Your Twitter burned out long before your legend ever did 